Good afternoon and welcome to Midday Food for Your Soul. I'm O.C. Hill, the wife of the Bishop Ronald Hill, sitting in as your moderator on the broadcast today. Joining me is one of our health department, uh, uh, co-health co department leader of our uh, health department here at Love and Unity and the person, Brother Rashid Terry, and he's going to be sharing some very important information with you on today. And thank you for taking time to listen in today. We have some very important information uh, that I think will be of benefit to you. And we do encourage you to share this ministry with a family member or friend so they too can benefit from what we're sharing. I serve along with a number of First Ladies across the nation with an outreach organization known as the First Ladies Health Initiative, which is a faith-based network of active First Ladies in minority-majority communities. Uh, uh, First Ladies Health Initiative partners with health care providers, health volunteers, politicians, and various media groups to be able to communicate on a large scale wellness and other outreach platforms to minority communities throughout through our local churches, uh, through community events and other avenues that we have that have been made available to us. First Ladies Health Initiative is a national outreach effort and we hope to improve community-based care coordination and address some of the social deterrents to our health and focuses on preventive care for the most vulnerable populations worldwide. We're now going through a series known as the Management and Awareness of PTSD Caused by Racial Trauma. And so we want you to really listen in because we're going to be sharing some very important uh, information that has been put together by a, a research group called PCORI. And drawing from that information and other avenues, we'll be able to put this information together so that you would benefit from this topic. Again, PTSD caused by racial trauma. The scripture that the Lord gave us when we first started this venture of coming with this information about two, three years ago now, we've been going, is out of first, uh, third John, rather, uh, verse 2, which says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. And that's a good word that John addressed to his friend Gaius. And so we'll be sharing a little bit uh, along that those lines. But we also want to make you aware of some other health issues and things that you need to be aware of uh, uh, that's going on in particular months that we will address. And that it just happens in the month of April. Uh, and you'll see this across the nation. There is a uh, a uh, deal we're now dealing with is known as a stress awareness month in the health field. Stress awareness. Anybody know about anything about stress? <laughs> Every April, our writer says the Health Resource Network has proudly sponsored National Stress Awareness Month in the United States. During this 30 uh, day period, health professionals and other health care organizations are encouraged to share educational resources and other programs to help people all around the world lower their stress levels. Anybody been in any stress? <laughs> Understanding stress, how, how chronic stress impact the body and the mind. According to the research studies, stress in minor in minor to moderate doses may be expected as the body is equipped to handle these reactions. However, ongoing or unattended stress can have serious consequences. Chronic stress impacts the entire body. Let me say that again. Chronic stress or what, uh, severe stress, we could say, impacts the entire body and can harm the well-being on, on a long-term basis. Ongoing stress is a risk factor, listen up, for heart disease, dementia, stroke, 
accelerated aging, depression, anxiety, insulin resistance, prolonged digestive issues, and irritable bowel movement, often known as IBS. In addition, chronic stress may impact your outlook on life, interpersonal relationships, performance in the workplace, and self-care. And so it's very important. And let me give you just one other tip and then we're going to move on. It says how to recognize the signs of stress. Understand the signs of stress may help you recognize them and find strategies that target the unique circumstances of your stressful situation. And below are just a few of the indicators that I'm going to mention. Increase irritability and anger. Mm. A loss of interest in previously enjoyed activities. Mental burnout. Changes in your appetite. Changes in sleep patterns. Gastrointestinal distress like nausea, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion. Loneliness. Body aches and body tension. Mood swings. Feeling overwhelmed. Headaches. <laughs> Each day, check in with yourself to ask if you're experiencing any of the above stress uh, uh, or burnout. If you recognize these signs, you might benefit from contacting someone you trust or a mental health professional. Along, the other along with the other consequences of long-term stress, you may be living with a mental condition if symptoms do not get better with time or effort. So it's these things you should kind of watch out for and, and, and take note of them. Just don't let it bypass you, okay? So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Rashid at this time. Uh, so that he I have ample time to be sh to share with you, and then I'm going to come back. Amen. Thank yeah, you, you're welcome. <laughs> well, we pray that you're doing well today. Pray that you're healthy in your body, even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. We're thankful that you're tuning in right now. So please, if you can, share this on your timeline. Share this through text message to somebody so that they can join in on this important and vital information that we're going to give you today. Mm -hmm. And in the words of Barry E. Knight, <laughs> I want to tell you to take copious notes today. <laughs> take copious notes. Because guess what? Over the next seven weeks, we are going to wow. share some profound information for you because many of us have no clue that we are living with someone that may have PTSD. Mm. And so now we get to get involved in mm -hmm. a major way. And I know this is a move of God that is happening. So we want to get involved. We want to take some notes. Mm -hmm. Seven weeks. I want you all to prepare yourselves for this. So today <laughs> um, we're going to start off with our first week of um, information on helping someone with PTSD. All right. All right. Good. Come on, say it with me. Yeah. Let's help someone with PTSD today. <laughs> all right. So when someone you care about suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, that's what PTSD stands for, mm -hmm. it can be overwhelming. But with these steps, you can help your loved one move on with their life. Amen? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's go deeper. When a partner, friend, or family member has post-traumatic stress disorder, it affects you too. PTSD isn't easy to live with, and it can take a heavy toll on relationships and family life. You may be hurt by your loved one's distance and moodiness or struggling to understand their behavior, why they are less affectionate or more volatile. Um, you may feel like you're walking on eggshells or living with a stranger at times. You may also have to take on a bigger share of household tasks and deal with the frustration of a loved one who won't open up. Mm. Here we go, y'all. The symptoms of PTSD can even lead to job loss, substance abuse, and other problems that affect the whole family. So don't be discouraged. We got this information. Look, once this stuff is exposed, we can now get in, um, be a part of it. All right, so let's go a little deeper. It's hard not to take the symptoms of PTSD personally. If we could be honest, mm -hmm. it hurts our feelings. Mm -hmm. right? So, but it's important to remember that a person with PTSD may not always have control over their behavior. Your loved one's nervous system is stuck in a state of constant alert, 
making them continually feel vulnerable and unsafe or having to relive the traumatic experience over and over. We have no clue what's going on up in here. This can lead to anger, just like Lady Osi said with stress, irritability, mm -hmm. depression, mistrust, and other PTSD symptoms that your loved one can't simply choose to turn off. So here are some of the tips that we're gonna cover over the next seven weeks. Tip one is providing social support. Number two is to be a good listener. Three is to rebuild trust and safety. Four is to anticipate and manage triggers. Five is to deal with volatility and anger. Six is to support the treatment that they get. And then take care of yourself. Because once you get involved, now you have to look at how you're going to take care of yourself in this situation. Right. So. Let's go here. It's common for people with PTSD to withdraw from family and friends. They may feel ashamed and not want to burden others or believe that other people won't understand what they're going through. I want you to recognize this today. While it's important to respect your loved one's boundaries, your comfort and support can help them overcome feelings of helplessness, grief, and despair. In fact, trauma experts believe that face-to-face -face support from others is the most important factor in PTSD recovery. So we need to get really involved. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we don't want to do, all right, when we're trying to help family members or friends with PTSD is that we don't want to pressure them into talking. We may feel that way. Our emotions, our feelings, we may want to pressure them into it. Like, come on, open up but it can be very difficult for people with PTSD to talk about their traumatic experiences. For some, it can even make them feel worse. Instead, let them know you're willing to listen when they want to talk, or just hang out when they don't. Comfort for someone with PTSD comes from feeling engaged and accepted by you, not necessarily from talking. Mm -hmm. All right, so write this down don't pressure your loved one into talking amen so one of the things you do want to do is do normal things with your loved ones you know you can go for walks you can go um, eat lunch together and just do the normal things go work out um, take a fitness class together or some type of um, activity that you can do together where it's not necessarily about the PTSD event all right so making sure that you do normal things and yes invite them to church <laughs> yes always that yes. word of god is powerful and you never know yes, when that moment true. where they may be awakened or delivered set free so you want to make sure you put them in the right position to hear mm -hmm. from a man or woman of god that's ready to preach that word because we can't hear without a preacher so mm -hmm. let's move with that all right um this is what you also want to do you want to let your loved one take the lead so write this down. Do normal things with your loved one and let your loved one take the lead rather than telling them what to do. All right. So everyone with PTSD is different, but most people instinctively know what makes them feel calm and safe. So take cues from your loved one as to um, how you can best provide support and companionship. Glory to God. That's so That's good. True. That is so good. Mm -hmm. And then this next part, write this down manage your own stress you still gotta look you still need to take care of yourself because once you take on a lot of those things and and you're overwhelmed with um overextending yourself in some cases mm -hmm. you might start to get stressed out so you got to learn to manage your own stress prayer reading your scriptures meditating on the word of god yes. having some time to relax and unwind do something fun for yourself so don't lose focus on self-care also next one I want you to write is to be patient recovery is a process and part of recovery someone mentioned this to me three weeks ago and that stuck with me part of recovery is falling back into old ways mm -hmm. it's part of it and so we can't get disappointed when they revert back you see things happening that's good for them and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden they revert back and now they're triggered again yes be patient it's part of the process it has to happen that's the only way we can be awakened to the truth. We got to see the lies so that we can know what the truth is also. Amen. 
So be patient. Recovery is a process. It takes time and it often involves setbacks. And then lastly, we want you to educate yourself about PTSD. That's what we're doing right here. So that's why we're taking copious notes and we're making sure that we stay on top of this because we want to be a blessing to them. We don't want to be a hindrance right. and we don't want to be, we don't want to fall into the, into the trap of being triggered ourselves. So that's, that's what we want to do. So be patient, manage your own stress and educate yourself about PTSD. And before I turn it over, I want to just say that Jesus is the son of God. He is the light of men. And this is what he says. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. So just rest in that fact right there. And just understand that we have an awesome God that we serve. We have an awesome Savior who took all our burdens upon himself. And if we turn to him, he says, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we're going to leave it there, and I'll turn it over to Lady Osi. Thank you so much. A lot of really good information. I want to let you know we're here at the same time, Monday, Tuesday, rather, through Friday. At 12.30 p.m., you can join us on YouTube or Facebook at this time slot. So if you miss some of that information, perhaps you can go back and view uh, this particular program. Uh, on tomorrow morning, in fact, every Friday morning at 9 a.m., you can join Bishop Hill for a live prayer meeting emanating from the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. So if you're in the area, you'll like to come by. I'm going to be giving you the ad address in just a minute. Or you can view it also on YouTube and Facebook at 9 a.m. here in Southern California. I think that's 12, uh, 12 uh, p.m. back east. Uh, the, uh, on, we're also on the Impact Network daily Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m right here on West Coast time and then back east is at 9 a.m. and you will enjoy the Word of God. We also are on the Word Network. We're on the Word Network on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. That's Tuesdays at 4 p.m. and I believe back east that's 7 p.m. for those on East Coast time. And then we're on the Word Network also every Friday at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Coast time, and that's 3.30 uh, back east. We're also doing some radio, radio streaming on 99.5, which is KKLA. You can pick us up on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. That's 11 a.m. on Saturday mornings. And then on Sunday mornings, KJLH 102.3, which is a favorite here locally in Southern California. Sunday mornings, 102.3, pick us up at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Again, that's 7.30 a.m. on 102.3. Then I want to mention every third Friday, mark your calendar for those of you who are going through a tough time right now. We make available to you free groceries. That's every third Saturday at 12, begins at 12 noon until around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And I'm going to be giving you that address in just a minute now. You want to get a pen and paper in hand so that you'll be able to pick, to, uh, pick it up so that you'll know exactly where, you, where you're going. We want to uh, let you know our in-person services right now are at... Uh, 10 a.m. on every Sunday morning and 6.30 p.m. in the evening. Again, our in-person services are held at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning and 6.30 p.m. Uh, in the evening. So our Wednesday night Bible study is at 7.30 p.m. And then it restreams itself on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Now, the Love and Unity Christian Fellowship Church of God in Christ is located at 1840 South Wilmington, right here in the city of Compton at the corner of Wilmington and Walnut, again in the city of Compton. Let me repeat that address for some of you who might want to visit or take advantage of some of uh, the activities that we're going on here. That's 1840 South Wilmington. 
That's right at the corner of Wilmington and Walnut, right off the 91 freeway at the Wilmington off-ramp. And we'd love to have you come and to do, be a part of what the Lord is doing right here in the city of Compton. We're getting ready to close, but we want to uh, be sharing some information with you on, on how you can benefit us by donating to the ministry that we're involved in. It takes a lot of dollars <laughs> to come your way on a daily basis. And we would appreciate you joining us. Uh, in supporting Food for Your Soul ministry. So listen to this short video and want to thank you once again for allowing us to share with you what the Lord is doing here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. And we know you're going to continue to be blessed as you are a blessing to this ministry. God bless. Consider financially supporting Food for Your Soul television broadcasts. Together, we can change lives. Your support will allow us to reach the world with the good news that Jesus saves. You can give online at loveandunity.org. Click the Give button and it will take you to our secure page where you'll have the option to give by credit card, debit card, or bank account. You can set up a one-time or reoccurring gift by linking your preferred payment method. You can also text a gift by texting the amount you desire to 310-507-1181 or mail to P.O. Box 5449, Compton, California, 90224. Thank you in advance for your support.